morning everyone we're up before the sun so there's not much to show you outside hopefully the sun decides to join us at some point during the day we got to go to Arburg Arburg Manitoba I'm got to pick up a load apparently it's gonna be quite a while they warned me in advance that it takes quite a while to get loaded so maybe I'll get a nap well I don't know if they need me to like to actively help the whole time but it could take they said up to six seven hours or so to load which is fine because they warned me in advance, right? So I could plan ahead and okay, I agreed to this. It's not just like, yeah, go get loaded and then it takes all day. That, that <laughs> They wouldn't do that to me. Not on purpose anyway. But anyway, so we gotta go up there. I'm hoping I can get a nap or something. If not, that's uh, fine too. Man's gotta work. Let's get going. Arburg is two hours north of me where I am here in Southern Manitoba. Well, I missed my opportunity to take the detour because I didn't know traffic was stopping here. This is Trans Canada 1. Uh, something must have happened. I see a fire truck on that side of the road over there parked. I saw one car in the ditch a few miles back. There must be slippery sections on the road right now, which I wouldn't, I wouldn't be surprised. I haven't quite noticed the slipperiness yet. Maybe I've just got better tires. I knew that it's winter time, right? There are gonna be slippery sections, so you drive as if the whole road is ice. But uh, somebody uh, woke up this morning and forgot that it was December. Hopefully everybody's okay. Man, I wish I would've taken the, the service road. Could've gotten around this whole mess. I just saw brake lights down the road in front of me, right? And I thought everyone was slowing down. I didn't know we were going to come to a dead stop. So now we're right between uh, roads, right? There's mile roads. Every mile there's a road that crosses the highway. And then that road would let me get onto that road over there. We might get to the next one. Oh, jump on there. Depends how far ahead this accident is. Ooh, this guy's got some squeaky brakes. Ooh. Squeaky, squeaky. It's not me. I don't know what's going on here. I know this Mercedes is really getting impatient in front of me and he wants to blow by everybody on the shoulder. But there's people parked on the shoulder up ahead here. I don't know if they're involved in this accident or what, but this guy and those guys are blocking the emergency lane for if an ambulance needs to get by, you always have to leave the shoulder open so that ambulance and emergency vehicles can get by in a backup. So often you see people either parked on the shoulder like this or driving on the shoulder, plugging it up, and then the ambulance can't get through, right? You can actually get a pretty big fine for that. Because in that case, you're blocking emergency personnel and uh, you don't want to get caught doing that. Oh, I see. In the ditch off to our left, there is a pickup truck upside down by the looks of it. Oh, no. Shoot, so these guys stopped here might have been witnesses and they're just sticking around to give their way, which is nice of them to do. You know, they gotta be at work this morning too, but it's nice to be able to, you know, give your witness statement into the police just so people know what's going on, especially if somebody caused this, you know, so that the correct person gets punished for causing an accident or injuries. It's always good to have witness accounts of what happened. I'm not sure if you're gonna be able to see the pickup because it's behind these, off to my left here. It's behind that white pickup right there. I don't know why we're stopped here though. So there's vehicles in the ditch here off to our left, but we're also stopped because there must be something up ahead. So there must have been some kind of pile up or something. This is a very busy highway, so it's uh, it's gonna back up fast. Watch this Mercedes in front of me. He's gonna he's gonna cut out onto the shoulder right away. Watch this. He's gonna get past this pickup. Oh no, they're not upside down. There's just two cars in the ditch. Ah, this guy's gonna block your view of it. Sorry, guys. Of course, right? Of course. Oh, you got rear-ended. Okay, so traffic must have been at a stop, and then there was a pickup truck that rear-ended a four-door sedan there. Oh, you hit him hard, too. Yay! Put your phone down. 
down, right? I bet you anything he had his phone in his hand. Bet you anything. Oh, this guy with his brakes. Yikes. He's been beside me this whole time. So, okay, so this accident wasn't what's causing the backup here. I gotta close my window. This guy's brakes beside me are just killing my eardrums. I've been there, bud. I know. Don't worry about it. I've been there. So I don't know what's going on, man. I thought for sure this Mercedes was going to jump out on the shoulder, but I think because there's cops right off to our left here at this accident, I think that's why he's holding back. They wait till we're a little further ahead and the cops are further behind us. I bet you anything he's going to jump on the shoulder, try to jump in front of everybody. I really need to get going, though. I don't got too much time to play with. I got to be up in Arbor before 10. He said between 8 and 10, and I had arranged it perfectly now that I would get there at about quarter after 8, maybe 8.30 with some delays. This has been a delay. So we still have time. I just, I didn't want to get there right at 10 like that. They gave me a two hour window, which is nice of them. I didn't want to like, use up that whole two hour window and show up right at the end, just barely making it. Because yeah, if it's gonna take them six, seven hours to load me, they obviously want me there early enough that they can get me loaded before end of day, right? 10, 11, 12, one, two, three, four. Yeah, if it takes, if it takes, six or seven hours we'll be loading until four or five or later yikes yeah i gotta get moving i gotta get everybody i gotta get moving don't you know i'm in a hurry don't you know i want to get on that service road i wish i could just drive through the ditch i don't think i'd make it <laughs> my steer tires would cut right into that ditch and get stuck Plus, here I am talking about this Mercedes guy who's going to jump in front of traffic. <laughs> It'd look pretty bad if I would jump the ditch. Nah, we won't do that. We won't do that. The idea crossed my mind, but just because the idea crossed my mind doesn't mean I'm going to do it. He keeps thinking about it. Keep an eye on our right side there. Here comes someone who's impatient. Here he comes. They are way more important than any of us. Oh, oh, are you gonna follow him? I know you want to. I know you want to, but you know you're not supposed to. He's so conflicted, you know? It's like he wants to do it. Oh, and that guy cut into traffic up ahead of us there. Oh, that just boils your blood, doesn't it? Go down all the way down on the shoulder and cuts into traffic up ahead just to beat some of the rush. Meanwhile, all of these people are nicely waiting in line. Oh, I, I get it. I get why you want to stop them, right? Makes your blood boil. Every person here is feeling the same way. Okay, guy wants to get in front of me. I saw you rushing around people on the shoulder, buddy. I shouldn't be letting you in. Do I get a thank you wave at least? Oh, I do. Oh. Okay. So you're a nice cheater. Okay. I saw you cheating, getting around traffic on the shoulder behind me. I shouldn't have let you in. At least he said thank you. So this is what's causing all of this here.
look both ways before crossing the highway. I don't know whose fault that would have been, but whoever hit him obviously had the right of way. Don't cut me off. Don't cut me off. I know what you were thinking of doing. I can tell by people the way they drive. They're like, mm. Okay, okay, man, yeah, I was wrong. It didn't come out. So this is Deacon's Corner now. We're uh, on the east side of Winnipeg. Oh, and this guy's just flying up beside me too. Dude, did you not just see that accident? It's slippery out here. <laughs> it's people. And foggy, that doesn't help. Maybe that's sort of what played a factor in that accident. Maybe it was foggy, but no, 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 no. It's not that foggy. It's not that foggy. If you look both ways, you should still see headlights coming, unless the guy who hit him was running without his headlights on. Who knows? I just hope everyone's okay. Ah, if, if there was anyone in that passenger seat, they would have definitely been hurt. But hopefully they'll be okay if there was. Man, hate seeing that stuff. So I've arrived, I had to back into their yard here, uh, leaving enough room on the side here for vehicles to get through. I believe I'm picking up these trailers here or someone similar to it. I don't know, uh, they're just on break right now. They're gonna come out and greet me right away and figure out what's going on. I'm here uh, messing around with my Wabasto bunk heater again. Trying to get the thing fired up again. If you remember from last week, I've been having trouble with it. It needs service really badly. The uh, burner is probably a little bit filled with soot or something. So it has a hard time igniting. And then once it ignites, it heats the cab nicely until you turn it off, but then it all cools off and hardens, I guess. And then it's hard to get it going again. It's getting service soon, but I just, I don't have the time now to do it. It's gonna, I'm gonna get it done when the old blue gets serviced next. So I can get it all done in one shot and only have to bring the truck to the shop once. But in the meantime, I'm hoping I can get this heater going. It doesn't want to fire up at all today now. I'm sort of tempted of just getting it going and just leaving it on, just constantly burning. That's probably not good either, but at least it's on then, right? I can turn it way down during the day so that it's just giving a light, a light heating in the cab and then turn it up at night so I can shut the truck off. <sighs> Not good to leave those things running forever and ever either, but it's only for, for a little while, a couple of weeks, I'm hoping. I just need to keep this thing going for a couple of weeks. I haven't been able to get it going today yet, but we'll get there. The weather's cleared up at least, right? So that's good, no more fog, and the roads were good and dry by the time we got up here. Oh, I hear the bunk heater starting now. I don't know if you can hear that or not. Okay, so it it has lit. It's just for the first couple of tries, it 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 snuffs itself out. It'll start and then it'll snuff out and then I'll try again. And it'll start and snuff out, start and snuff out until finally it gets warm enough that it keeps going. Let's see if we can get it going here. Cause I might be sitting here for like six to eight hours, they said, so. Oh, here's the forklift driver. I'm gonna go talk to him. See you in a bit. Okay, I had to straighten myself out a little bit here. But he's about to load me up. I don't think it's gonna take six to seven hours. They have it all stacked and ready. They're just gonna plop it on the trailer and it looks like it'll be done. But, I don't know, maybe there's something like, they have it all ready to go. They're just gonna plop it up on there and it looks like we'll be ready to go. So I don't think it'll, Take that long. As for my bunk heater, fired up no problem, second try. I hope it stays like that. I would rather not spend the money into it, but I know I have to. It needs to be serviced. It needs to be serviced. It's having issues. It needs to be cleaned out. Yeah. Stuff. Stuff happens, you know? It's always something. It's always, there, there's, it's always something. I'm all loaded up.
they helped me tie it down. So that was great. I didn't get a nap or anything. I thought I'd get to nap, and it didn't take six to seven hours. It took like maybe three. They were all ready for me, so they threw it on the trailer, and uh, we're ready to rock. So we're about 10 miles north of Arburg. I'm gonna go down to Arburg and then stop and check on everything. See how it's doing, make sure that everything's still tight. And then head over to Emo, Ontario, which is right close to Fort Francis where I always cross into International Falls, Minnesota. So we'll go down there, unload first thing in the morning. And then I run up to Kenora, grab some lumber, tarp it, and then head down to Brainerd, Minnesota with that. That's the plan for the next couple of days. Deacon's Corner Petro Pass on the east side of Winnipeg. This is where we were driving past this morning when that accident was slowing us down. Looks like they've got it all cleared up. That was a bad one, man. Someone got T-boned at highway speed, you could tell. Like, the passenger door was in the center of the vehicle. Like, I, I hope no one was sitting in that passenger seat, man. The driver looked like they'd probably have been okay. Probably was scratches, bumps, bruises, concussion, maybe, like, obviously from being hit. But the driver's seat looked like it would have been all right, but it was an older model car too without the side airbags. It's like an old green Taurus, like Ford Taurus. Man, brutal. But anyway, we're uh, we're here to just top off our fuel tanks. I just put in 150 liters, which is uh, how many gallons? 39 gallons. Just enough to get me down to Emo and then get back up to Kenora and then back down to Brainerd so that I can fuel up full tank in Brainerd uh, tomorrow night or the next day, day after tomorrow. I'll get cheaper fuel down there. So I, I didn't fill it up completely. It was, it was kind of close, but not completely, just enough. Because uh, I like to buy my fuel where it's cheaper. Well, you guys know this who've been watching me. I rant on and on about this all the time. I am the fuel bargain hunter. The fuel bar, the fu, the fargan, the fargan, the fargan hunter. Or the bar, barga fool. Bargafool. I'm the Bargafool hunter. <laughs> okay, I need to put the camera. I'm, I'm starving. I'm going to go inside, grab some food, coffee. And we got another four, four and a half hours of drive today. Yeah, so let's get her done. Do you see that truck parked right over there? That's where I was going to park. <laughs> But that's okay. We're in Emo, Ontario, and that's the gate where I got to deliver in the morning. Someone else is delivering there before me. They got to the gate first. So I'm just down the street. Like, literally, you can see it from here, right? First thing in the morning, I guess I'll let him go in first. He's got two boats on the back of his trailer to unload. That'll probably take maybe a half hour or so. So they open up at 8. I'm guessing by 8.30, he'll probably be rolling out of there. I want to make sure that as soon as he rolls in the gate that I'm zip right in behind him, that no one else sneaks in there. But if someone does, I mean, I'm, I'm parked right here, right? I don't have to move the truck until I see him move so that my clocks don't get all messed up, right? Should work just fine. So we'll get this unloaded, be out of here before noon. Uh, probably way before that. If I get in there at 8.30... Get unloaded. It'll take a little longer to unload me because I got all these trailers. I'd say they'll probably have me unloaded in an hour, I would say. Hour, hour and a half tops. So 10 o'clock, probably be out of here. It's an hour and a half back to Kenora. 
11.30, noon, back there for noon, get loaded. It usually takes about two hours, two to three hours in Kenora. Two to three o'clock, be out of there. Come back past here, go through International Falls down to Brainerd. That takes about six, seven hours. So then three o'clock, nine o'clock, 10 o'clock, we should be in Brainerd. If I start my day here at 8.30, I should have until 10.30 when my 14 hour clock is up. And I can do all of that in less than 11 hours of driving. I'll be driving into the U.S. So where I'm stopping here, I have to stop for a consecutive 10 hours so that I'm legal to go into the U.S. tomorrow. And then I only have 11 hours to drive in one day once I get there within a 14-hour window. You following? I should be able to get there. Just barely. I should have like an hour or so left on my clock. Hour, hour and a half maybe. Depending on if there's any delays, right? So we should make it down to Brainerd tomorrow. And where I'm delivering, they unload until 10 o'clock. Shoot, I don't know if I'm going to make that. I'm going to have to rush. I'm going to have to rush. If I can get there by 10 o'clock, because the night crew is there till like 2 in the morning, right? And they'll accept trucks in there. That's like where you take the tarps off inside. Uh, they'll accept trucks until 10 o'clock. So I can get there by like 9, 9.30 at the latest. Take 6 hours from here, 3.30. I hope that it's fast when we get to Kenora. If I get loaded fast, I get unloaded here fast, get there fast, get unloaded, I could get there earlier, let's say like eight o'clock. Eight o'clock's great. I'll get in there, get unloaded, get empty, and then first thing in the morning, I'll be ready for a reload, right? Okay, so tomorrow's gonna be a rush day. Rush, 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 rush. What day is not a rush day? Everybody wants their freight yesterday. Uh, it's definitely a different, it's a, it's a different, uh, beast. It's a different thing altogether on this regional stuff. Cause I'm on a regional position now. Right. But, uh, long distance is more relaxed, long distances. You know, you usually have, you usually have some extra time to get there or you'll get there on like a Saturday and you got to deliver on a Monday or you'll get there Sunday afternoon. Got to wait till Monday to unload and then go reload. No, 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 no. This regional stuff. This is like, you got to stay on your game all the time. It's just rush, 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 rush. You want to squeeze as much possible revenue into the week as possible. Just cram it all in there so that you can get home on the weekend and perform all your honey-do lists. So the work never really stops. <laughs> Plus on the weekends, you got to take care of this guy, right? Sometimes you got to take an extra day off. So this thing going to the shop, there's always something to do. Kids, when you're living at home with mom and dad, take it from me. I've said this before, but take it from me once again. Enjoy it. Savor it. You're in school right now. Enjoy every second of it. I know you're excited to grow up. You're excited to get out on your own. I was too. And believe me, it's awesome. Being on your own as an adult is awesome. You can do whatever you want, whenever you want. Like I can eat as many cookies as I want to. No one's going to stop me. It's great. It's awesome. I have my own house, my own car. Now I have my own, my, my own businesses. I'm my own person taking care of myself and my family. Growing up is awesome, but don't get, don't be in such a rush to get here. <laughs> Cause once you're here, you can never go back to there where you are. Never. You never get to go back to there. Now for the rest of my life, I have to make sure I'm the one in charge. I'm the adult. I'm the parent. I'm the husband. I'm the one that has to make sure that nothing goes wrong. All along together with my wife. We're a team, right? We're a team. We work together. But uh, all the responsibility falls on me now. So it is awesome being an adult because you can eat as many cookies as you want, whenever you want, whenever. You can wake up in the middle of the night and have six cookies. Who's going to stop me? Who's <laughs> <laughs> I can do whatever I want, but at the same time, I also have to pay the bills. So enjoy being a kid at home with mom and dad. Don't rush out of the house. I mean, unless you're in a bad situation, I'm, I'm not going to tell you what to do, but if you've got a loving family at home, oh, just enjoy it. Don't be in a rush to get out. Save some money. Oh, don't listen to me though. You do you. Okay. You do you. I rushed out of the house. I moved out when I was 18. Uh, looking back, obviously I wish I would have stayed home longer. I mean, I had a great home growing up, great childhood, great life, great parents, a great home. Why was I in such a rush to go and be an adult? Just so that I could eat as many cookies as I want whenever I want? Like, 
I have the rest of my life to do that. But that, being at home with mom and dad, having them take care of everything, having them pay the bills. Like once you turn 18, I think you should be paying rent if you're living at home with your mom and dad. You should be paying rent. But that's still nothing compared to having to pay all this. But you get it. You get it. So uh, don't worry. When you get in, when you get to be an adult, it's a lot of fun. It's a lot of fun. You can determine your own life path. You can do whatever you want to do. It's great. But you'll get there when you get there. Okay. You don't have to get there tomorrow. It'll come. Okay. Anyways, enough of this. Uh, whatever this is. I'll see you tomorrow. I've got a long day tomorrow, so I'm going to go back there and have as long of a sleep as I possibly can. I have not gotten a lot of sleep this weekend. Constantly on duty. All the time. And uh, when I'm at home, you know, it doesn't stop there either. But I, can't, I have nothing to complain about. I've got a great family at home. Great wife. Great kid. Great dogs. Great home. Great house. That's good. Who needs sleep, right? Sleeping's for dead people and babies. And tonight, it's for me. I'll see you tomorrow. Remember when you're out there on the highways, drive safe around everybody. It's not just you on the highway. Everybody else is trying to get home to their families as well. Keep your head up on a swivel. Keep your eyes on the road. Keep your stick on the ice. Pay attention. And drive safe. I'll see you tomorrow.